good all the time, all the time. amen we want to welcome here to first christian church and as always we're here because our savior jesus is alive amen he's risen from the dead and we're here to worship him with everything we got amen, amen. all right it's good to see everybody here today if you're a visitor please take a card in the pew in front of you fill it out put it in the offering plate later and if anyone has a prayer request please do the same and again i promise you we pray for these people that you put on these cards they're very important to us to do that uh, several announcements I want to make. Uh, first of all, uh, Matt and Heidi and, and Bella are here for the first time today as staff members of the church. And so if you haven't met them, stand up for just a second there. We're, we're glad you're, you're here with us. Glad to be here. All right. And he started Thursday and we've spent like we have hurt our backs trying to clean out that office. But anyway, it's, it's happening though and it's doing, doing well. So welcome. If you haven't met him, make sure you see both of them after church, okay? And their little daughter, Bella, she's a, she's a doll. So, also, uh, Charles Gurley had, uh, called this morning, and Charles is back in, uh, in, in the emergency room with congestive heart failure. So please pray for him. And uh, the Faye Williams family, a neighbor of Betty Robbins, passed away. Please pray for that family. And also, Ron asked me to read this announcement. Uh, anyone who wishes to support churches in Bristol regarding the proposed casino can sign a petition in the foyer. So if you're interested in signing a petition about that, they'll be out in the foyer. Please take time to do that. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you that we can be here and worship. I pray, Father, that everything that happens here would bring honor to Christ our Savior. I pray, Lord, that the Spirit would move in mighty ways and people's lives would be touched. Maybe even someone would come to know you as Savior today. That's what our prayer is. So you be with us, Lord, and God and direct us, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Here's Charlie. Well, good morning. Hey, let's all stand. This is, this is kind of a toe tapper here. Some glad morning when this life is o'er
tonight to bless and come into your house to sing praises and glory to your name. We ask you to be the best we get you. Invoke on this service and help us, Father, to reflect on all the things you've done for us in our lives. We thank you for the blessings of this day. We thank you for the you <coughs> brought us to us. Be God directs in all we do, Father, in Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Victory in Jesus. I heard an old Crucified, they laughed and scorned him as he died. The 
remembering Jesus. That's what this table is all about. When I remember Jesus as I partake, I like to remember all that I can remember from reading His Word, the things that He had done and what He had taught us and how we should live our lives. You know, at this particular time, He uh, is getting close to His crucifixion. And sorrow had begun to set in with some of his followers because even though they were his followers, they didn't quite understand what he was conveying to them that he, he was going to leave them. And some couldn't, couldn't hardly accept that he was going to leave them. But I'd like to read 1 John 14, 2. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So what Jesus was saying, this is not the end. This is, will be the beginning of forever. Now I'd like to turn over to Revelations, but before I do, you know, we're no different from what they were in those days. A lot of times we don't really understand what Jesus is telling us in some of the scripture ourselves. We need to study it and think about it because we think in earthly terms more so than we do in spiritual terms. And Jesus was conveying to them, this is going to be hereafter spiritual. And we get a glimpse in Revelations. Twenty one, one through five. I'd like to read that. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. I'm so thankful that his death on the cross made a way for us to enter into that new city. And as we partake this morning, 
may our minds go back to the price that he paid that made it possible that we could enter in. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we thank you. We could never thank you enough for being willing to give your life for ours. You paid the price for us. We know, Father, that we can never repay you. But while we're here, we will try to live up to what you have asked us to do. We'll try to live for you and share you with others that they too might enter into that new city when we leave this world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
You know, we hear a lot about money, especially as this campaign draws to an end. And I am convinced, there's no doubt in my mind, if a lot of this money was spent on changing people's lives, that the division in this country wouldn't be as strong as it is today. So it's real important that we keep money in the forefront of our lives because it, it takes money for us to live. It takes money for these lights. It takes money for the church to expand. It takes money to go on the mission fields and try to win souls for Jesus. So as we take up this offering this morning, let's think about those things. In Jesus, let's shall we pray. Father, we thank you that we have a monetary system that enables us to do your work here on earth. Father, I am reminded of when I was a boy Money was slim. We had very little. But we had parents and we had people that belonged to you that went forward with what little they had. And now we're seeing the results of people being one to you. And Father, we pray that we will never forget that we have to support your work here in, on earth. For we ask this with the forgiveness of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not sure how that piano stays in place over there. <laughs> I hope you've had a good week. This is our time for prayer and praise. And uh, if you have your bulletins, you might want to take that and 
and peruse it there for just a few minutes to see the names that are there. <clears throat> uh, we always have an extensive uh, prayer list, and uh, so you might want to look at that. We have had two that have been handed to us. Uh, Jim Counts has a pulled hamstring, so we want to remember Jim. Jim uh, needs our prayers. Uh, also, Charles Gurley, and Tom mentioned Charles earlier, and uh, the Faye Williams family. Um, are there others that we didn't get a card on that you'd like to mention? Yes. Our nephew, Abel Overbay, he's four, and on Friday he went for an EEG and it showed he's having seizures, and he'll be going for further testing in the next few weeks. Okay. And he's three years old? Four. Four. Okay. Any others? Hey, hey, Marvin. I'm sorry, Connie, I didn't hear you. Okay. Any others? <clears throat> yes. My grandfather, Noah Van Dyke, will be having a biopsy surgical procedure done in the middle of the month to check for cancer. We certainly will remember him. Yes. Any others? I'd like to ask you to remember my sister. She had surgery this week for breast cancer, uh, Betty Kennedy. And also my sister-in-law will have surgery tomorrow uh, in Roanoke. And I'd like to ask your prayers for her. Uh, <clears throat> I know that in this building today that uh, there are many of us who have things on our heart and our mind that we might not even mention. Uh, I suspect if you'd be honest, that there have been times in your life when you thought, I'm just going to give up. Things just aren't going very well. Things aren't happening the way I want them to happen. Uh, prayers aren't being answered like I'd like for them to be answered. Uh, all these bad things that are happening around us in our country, all those things can make you become depressed if you're not careful. And that's exactly what Satan wants to happen in your life. Because I'm sure, unless you aren't living in this world that I'm in, that all of us at some time or the other have those feelings. And that's where Satan would like to put us down. But before we pray this morning, I want to read some verses of encouragement to you that have been left for us to remember who we serve and why we serve Him. Familiar verses, you can quote this yourself. From Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we come this morning praising You and honoring You for who You are, for what You have done for us, for the giving of Your Son that we might have freedom from sin. And God, we thank You for that. We honor You and praise You. And Lord, as we come together today, we know that on the hearts and minds of all those who've gathered here today, that there are thoughts and prayers and concerns, and yes, burdens. But Father, we know you hear them. We know you're our God. We know that you're the great physician. You're the counselor. You meet every need that we have if we just turn to you. So, Heavenly Father, we pray for each of these who've been mentioned here today. We pray for these who are on our prayer list. We ask, Father, that you would see to every need, and we trust you that you will. 
And we also ask, Father, that for all of us who are here today, that we'd find encouragement and we'd find courage through serving you all the days of our life. So that one day, Father, we can dwell with you in your place, in your house, forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning again, everybody. Well, well said, Ron. Appreciate that very, very much. And Wilburn, thank you for your meditation. Thank you, worship team. We've had a good day so far. At 8.30 this morning, we had a men's prayer breakfast. And of course, Randy and Ken were here long before that cooking. And I want to appreciate, express appreciation for that. But the men split up as we do every month. And we will go all around this building praying for everything that happens in here. So thank you guys for that. And we had a good day yesterday. There was a, a hiking group. We went over to Stone Mountain, North Carolina. You know, it's a big rock out in the middle of nowhere. And I've been going over there for 40 years. And it's amazing. It's, ama it's a miracle. The mountain has gotten bigger <laughs> and steeper. It's, it's true. It really has. But we had a good time. And you ought to go with us sometime. Uh, we'll go on a flatter hike next time. But anyway, that being said, let's stand and greet each other warmly for a minute or two. message let's pray heavenly father as always i ask you to speak through me you are the master i am your servant i am your child may your will be done may your spirit move in this place and meet the needs of people in mighty ways we know lord that there is spiritual warfare engaged in here right now so i pray lord that you would bind satan in this place that his lies will have no power here and that your truth will be made known. In Christ's name, amen. 
Today's message is, does anybody really know what time it is? And I thought that was appropriate on the day you turn your clocks back. So I want to be, uh, I want to ask you a question. Be honest. How many of you forgot to turn your clocks back? Nobody? Wow, that's pretty good. Oh, one, okay, one. You're forgiven. All right. But anyway, it, uh, it, it makes me think of that, and this is going to hit you baby boomers especially. The rest of you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But there was a song, a group, a group called Chicago back in the day, and they had a song, 25 or 6 to 4. Do you remember that song? And, and do you remember the theme of that song was, in the song it says, does anybody really know what time it is? 25 or 6 to 4. That's pretty neat. So that's the title of today's message. We're going to talk about time. And today's scripture is also an inspiration for another song back in the 60s. Really going back. And this was a song done by the birds. Have you ever seen the birds, I ask? And kids say, yeah, I saw some out on the pole out there. No, not those birds. The B-Y-R-D-S, birds. It was a rock group of the 60s. And I think I actually saw them at some point. But they had a song called Turn turn, turn. You remember that? Anybody remember? Come on, I'm not the only old guy in here. You sing it. You sing it. Anyway. Turn, turn, turn. And the neat thing is, it was written by Pete Seeger, of all people, and it was based on Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 through 8, which is our scripture for today. So, let's read that. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. You know, those words were written by Solomon and his teaching on time is timeless. These words show real life in the real world. There are times for all kind of things in our lives, aren't there? Things happen all the time. Sometimes the things are good. Sometimes they're pleasant. Sometimes we like them. And there are other times that are sad. Sometimes times are rough, like Ron was talking about. Sometimes it gets to us and we feel terrible. There's a time for everything. And I've struggled over this message. You know, what was I going to do? Go over every one of these times? I don't think so. What, the approach I want to take is, for me at least, the difficult matter is not knowing that there's different times, but when is it time to do the right thing? In other words, when should I speak? And when should I be silent? When should I laugh? And when should I cry? Because sometimes we mess up. When to search and when the time to give up and so forth. And this is where we get in trouble, isn't it? We get our times mixed up. We do the wrong thing at the wrong time, perhaps. What are we to do? Well, I've got two points today I want to make. The first one of what to do is this. Seek God before doing anything. Is it anything? Yes. He cares about every minute aspect of our lives. We need to seek him before we do anything. For example, how many times have you asked yourself, and you don't have to raise your hand unless you want to, how many times you've asked yourself these questions? I wish I would have kept my mouth shut. Huh? Nobody in here has ever thought that, have they? How about this one? I should never have taken that first blank, that first drink, that first smoke, that first hit. How about this? I can't believe I bought blank. I'm bad about that, and I have a canoe in my basement to uh, verify that. I had to have a canoe! Had to have a canoe! 
I went and got the canoe, and Katrina and I went in at one time. And I wish I hadn't bought it. Or we could say, I, I, how many times we said, I should never have told that lie. How that lie has come back to haunt me or to damage a relationship or my family. Or how about, I was wrong and I should have apologized. How many times we think we should have apologized and, and admitted our wrongdoing. On and on it goes. We get our times messed up. We do the wrong thing at the right time or the right thing at the wrong time. And we even do the wrong thing at the wrong time. What God would have for us, obviously, is for us to do the right thing at the right time. How do we do that? Again, I think one way is to seek God in everything. Don't leave him out of anything in our lives. Psalm 104, 105, 4 says, Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek his face when? Always. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. I know that I have plans for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. We seek God in everything. I get this illustration that sort of goes along with this, and this will be good for you baseball fans. I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm going way back in time. But back in 1988, the Los Angeles Dodgers were tough. You know, they won the World Series. And they had a pitcher on that team named Oral Hershiser. Anybody remember, remember him? A devout Christian man. They just won the World Series, and Oral had been named the most valuable player. That's a picture of him there. And he was on TV shows and so forth and so on. And they noticed in some of the videos of one of the games, he was in the dugout leaning up against the wall with his mouth moving. And he was on Johnny Carson's show one night. And Johnny, in part of the interview, asked Oral, Oral Hershiser, says, what were you saying when you were leaning up against the dugout there? And Oral says, I wasn't saying anything. He said, well, your mouth was moving. What were you doing? He said, I was singing. And Johnny Carson says, singing? I didn't know you were a singer. What were you singing? Uh, he said, sing it for us. And Oral says, oh, that's all right. No, no, go ahead in the crowd. Yeah, sing it, sing it, sing it. So finally, Oral Hersizer sang the song. And he sang, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures hear me low. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And Johnny Carson was silent. And they say that one at a time, one guy stood up in the crowd and started clapping. And then pretty soon, the entire place went wild for Oral Hershiser, giving a witness to God. Oral Hershiser was the most valuable player, and he says, he said, I'm the most valuable player because God's the most valuable God. You know, he's the one that has given the ability, and I love you. You know, he evidently sought God in every area of his life, including playing a game. And then when he was in a position to do the right thing at the right time and give glory to God in front of a national audience, it happened. He was ready to do the right thing at the right time. In, in, in order for us to do that, I think we have to make some decisions before they happen. We have to choose beforehand what our response will be in different situations. For example, when, when you get handed a beer or a joint at a party, that's not the time to decide where you stand on drug and alcohol use. You should make that decision before you went to the party or made the decision to not go to that kind of party to begin with. You know you're going to reject it. And so when the time comes, it's not a hard decision for you. Or when you're alone with your boyfriend or girlfriend, that's not the time to decide where you stand on when to have sex in your life. You've already made that decision. You have decided to honor God and wait until you're married and to trust him. You don't make that decision when the time comes up. You've already made that decision to do the right thing at the right time. So we need to take advantage of these opportunities that we have. And when we mess up, and we, when we do fall, 
then we take it to the Lord and we repent of those things. And we ask Him to forgive us, and He will, and we start over again. We take advantage of the time and the opportunities and the decisions we make. Ephesians 5. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity. Because the days are evil. You know, we have stuff going on all around us. And there are opportunities for us as Christians to be witnesses to lost people or to broken people or to depressed people or to Christians who are struggling every day with life. And we have the opportunity to minister to them. And we need to take advantage of those opportunities in seeking God so that we will do the right thing at the right time. So we do that. We seek God before doing anything. And then the second point is this. We trust God through the good and the bad. Solomon continues in chapter 3. He says, What does the worker gain from his toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on men. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and do good while they live, that everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all this toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken away from it. God does it so that men will revere him. You know, one of the all-time tough questions that people ask Christians like us about God is this. Why do bad things happen to good people? We hear it all the time. And it's true. It's true. Good people, even devout Christian people who love the Lord, servants of Christ, sometimes suffer terribly in this life. Does that mean that God has forgotten us? Does that mean that God doesn't love us anymore? Of course not. You know, we have to remember we live on a planet. We live on a planet that's under a curse from God because of our sin. And as a result, our mortal enemy, Satan, is called the prince of this world. He has power. He has power. It's a battle. It's a spiritual battle and war every day. There are times when that evil causes pain for everyone, including the Christian. All humans will have a time to weep, a time of war, a time to die. It comes with the territory. So what do we do when, when life does get hard? Do we give up on God? No. We do not give up on God. When the times get hard, what we do is we trust God more. We lean on God harder. We talk to Him more often. We praise Him stronger. We worship Him more sincerely. We don't back away from God. We run towards Him. That's the answer of the hard times. You know, I love that He has a plan that when this brief walk on earth is over and we will be with Him forever in a place where times will be better. There will be no more time to die. I love what Wilbur and read, you know, no more time to die, no more time to cry, no more time for war, no more time for hate. And I'm going to read that to you. Revelation 21, 21, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. There was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne says, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Hallelujah. The times are getting better, folks, for us. The best is yet to come. And you know what I've thought about this? You know what the best part of heaven will be? I guess this is my opinion here, but I think you'd say an amen to it. What will the best part of heaven be? Will it be streets of gold? No, I don't think so. Will it be that there'll be no more crying and pain? I don't think so. That's good, but I don't think it'll be the best. Is it not the things that we receive? We'll receive lots of things, you know, the mansion in heaven and the crown of life and all that stuff. That's all good stuff. 
and we're going to escape the hard times. That's good. All that is good about heaven, but the best part about heaven, the best part is this, simply, we'll be with God. Amen. We'll be with God. He will walk with us. He will talk with us. He will hold our hand. We will be with him forever. And I can't imagine in my wildest dreams how good that will be just to be with the Lord. That's the best part. All that other stuff goes with it. But him being there, he's the reason. He's the reason we yearn for it. He's the way. He will be there. C.S. Lewis wrote these words. Heaven offers nothing that a mercenary soul can desire. It is safe to tell the pure in heart that they shall see God, for only the pure in heart want to. Do you want to see God? Do you want to walk with him? Do you want to, you want to see Jesus face to face? Man, I hope so. That's the best part. Times change. Seasons change. We turn our clocks back. Change is everywhere whether we like it or not. We trust God through it all. And I'm going to tell you, you know this, but I'm going to tell you anyway, He loves you. And He has your best interest at heart. So I wanted to close with this question. What is it time for you to do? What is it time for you to do? Is it time for you to forgive someone that you've been holding a grudge against? Is it time? Is it time to stop that destructive habit that's been tearing your body and your mind apart? Is it time to stop? Is it time to start using your talents for the glory of God? Is it time to use your ability to sing or to play piano or to teach a class or volunteer in the nursery? Is it time for you to start using those talents for the glory of God? Is it time for you to start tithing your income? Is it time for you to start trusting the Lord with the 90% instead of the 100 that you're keeping for yourself? I guarantee you, he'll make it on, you'll make it on the 90 when you trust the Lord. Is it time for you to start doing that? Is it time for you to start being faithful in attendance? And I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but I'm also talking about Sunday school classes. Is it time for you to start coming to Sunday school and, and learning and growing and bringing your children? Is it time for you to, youth people to start coming to activities and events? We have a new youth minister here. He's got great ideas. Is it time for you to start coming and doing things? Is it time for you to go to TCTC? Is it time for you to come to Wednesday night prayer meeting? We have a new study starting on the life of Christ this Wednesday. Is it time for you to come? Is it time for you to stop examining the speck in someone else's eye? And maybe look to yourself and what you need to do? Is it time for you to stop supporting ungodly entertainment? Is it time for you to stop looking at what you're looking at? Or reading what you're reading, or going to the movies you're going to, or listening to the music that you're listening to, or playing the games that you're playing to that are ungodly influences. Is it time for you to stop? Maybe it's time for you to start witnessing and telling other people about Jesus. The people that you work with, you know they're not Christians. The people in your family, friends. Maybe it's time for you to start witnessing. Maybe it's time for you to start showing respect to people you've been putting down. Maybe it's a parent. Maybe it's a child. Maybe it's a coworker. People you've been not respecting that, that deserve that respect. Is it time for you to start doing that? Is it time for you to start praying every day and reading your Bible? Is it time for you to stop using foul language that dishonors God? in your home or in your workplace or wherever you might be? Is it time for you to start loving the Lord? Is it time? And the best question, the most important question, is it time for you to accept Christ as your Savior? Is it time for you to make a decision to do something big for the Lord with your life? I hope some of these things maybe have 
triggered something in you that it's time to act. It's time to move. It's time to do. Because you know what? Time is running out. It's running out. It, it's not infinite. It's not infinite. So before the instrumentalists come up, just a minute. I'm going to have you all come up, but just, just in a minute. Sometimes I think at an invitation time, we start to sing and everything's sort of lost, and people almost you know, get lost in the music. And, and if God's touching your heart right now, if God's touching your heart, then you need to make a decision to change something or to accept him as Savior or to rededicate your life or whatever it might be. Do it right now before the music starts. So is there anybody that needs to make a decision? I know this might be intimidating for you to come up in, in front of a big crowd of people. I'll tell you what, if you have a decision to make, raise your hand, and I'll come back where you are, and I'll walk up here with you. Does anybody have a decision? And everybody's okay. I'm going to take it that way. Everybody's okay. But if you're not, you know where we are. You call us anytime we're at the church. You come by. There's nothing more important to me or to Matt or to the elders or the deacons or the teachers. There's nothing more important that everybody in here makes it to glory one day. 100%. We want no one left behind, but it's up to you. All right, Charlie, if you all would come up now, we'll pray. Lord, thank you for the time that we do have. Forgive us for the time that we've wasted. Forgive us for the time that we've made wrong decisions. And I pray, Father, that from this moment on, that we use our time wisely. And we do the things that would honor Christ our Savior. We love you, Lord. And that's in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand and sing. We're going to sing one verse of this song. So you've got one more opportunity to come and make a decision. I will serve thee.